Hi, everybody. So, um, first thing I should do is tell you just real quick a little bit about me and what naturopathic medicine is because it's not widely known in the city or in this area. Um, I am a doctor. I use lifestyle, nutrition, and botanical medicine only. I don't use any drugs. In my practice, um, probiotics are a prescription. So, typically, someone will come in. We'll test your actual uh, stool and find out what's going on in your gut, find out exactly which bacteria are there, and then target them. Um, the microbiome is really hot right now. It's in all of your wellness, you know, Instagrams and Facebooks, but it's also really hot in science right now. Um, the National Institute of Health recently commissioned the Human Microbiome Project, so we're working scientifically to determine what bacteria are in the human gut what, and what they do. Um, the newest research that's really exciting shows that the microbiome influences your mood. That's one of the, the things I was most excited to see because your gut actually digests neurotransmitters. And there are profiles of different ratios of bacteria in your gut that are associated with depression, anxiety. Um, the, the bacteria in your gut also metabolize your hormones. They metabolize and digest your food. Um, and they actually also trigger your immune response. So a lot of the time in my practice, rather than giving an antibiotic, I'm giving a probiotic to restore good bacteria instead of killing off the bad. Um, the, other, the, the other thing to mention is that current research shows that our microbiome is really like a fingerprint. There is no normal. Um, there are good beneficial bugs and bad bugs. But the number one continuous factor is that we want to have a really diverse gut bacteria. The more diverse your ecosystem inside of your gut is, the healthier you are. And um, what's the way to do that? How do you get a diverse amount of bacteria in your gut? You actually have to eat a diverse amount of foods. So as you know, health conscious people, a lot of the time we find something that's really good for us and we make it taste good, we make it craveable, and we continue to eat it. But you can actually get in a rut even though you're eating healthy foods, um, just by eating the same foods again and again, because you're only going to grow the, those bacteria that feed off of those foods. So we all know about like the rainbow diet. It's really good to have all the different colors of the rainbow in your food. But um, I want to mention a little study. So there was a study of what are called the blue zones in the world, and this is part of a longevity project where they were looking at areas where people had the highest amount of people that lived past the age of 100. And so there are little pockets of the world where people are just living extraordinarily longer than the rest of us, and they wanted to figure out what's the difference. So one of these places is a tribe in Venezuela, and when they tested this, the, the tribe's stool, fecal matter, they found that they have 50% higher diversity than the rest of the world in their gut microbiome. And there's a couple of reasons. One is because they eat locally and they eat um, seasonally. So they're, they're in a rich area, a lush area. And they found that they were eating over 200 species of vegetables a year. 200 different species. I can't even, I challenge you to name more than 25. What are we eating? We're eating broccoli, spinach, asparagus, greens, and we might have some variation, but we're not heading anywhere near 200. So they're eating very diversely. But the other point is that they have their hands in the soil. So we're going to a grocery store and we're buying our food. Um, and most of us are buying our probiotics too, right? A lot of those probiotics are dairy-based. But the trick here is to find soil-based probiotics. That's where the healthiest gut flora, which are gut bacteria, come from. And people in these indigenous countries, have, or indigenous people that are farming their own food, they have their hands in the soil, they're not washing, they're not using antibacterial soap every time they walk in and out of a room the way that we are. And so they're naturally ingesting soil-based bacteria, soil-based probiotics. So there are soil-based probiotics on the market. And I want to talk a little bit about the market for probiotics because it's huge right now. I mean, you can find probiotics in Costco or Walmart as well as there are some really expensive brands of probiotics that are, you know, upwards of $50, 70 even $100 a bottle. Um, I have a lot of patients that come in and say, you know, I was on an antibiotic and my digestion was 
rocked. And I don't know what's going on because I ate my yogurt. But the truth of the matter is, cultured foods are more of a maintenance for your gut bacteria. They're not enough. They're not high enough to be a medicinal probiotic. So just to give you a little bit of um, context, a typical small cup of yogurt could have anywhere from five to, if you're really great, 25 billion species or count, not different species, but count of bacteria. There are times in my practice where people are ill and my prescription for them is 150 billion. So you can imagine a, a cup of yogurt is like a drop in the ocean compared to how much you need to really repopulate your gut with good bacteria. And it's really important to note, if you've taken an antibiotic, it takes a full year, 365 days, to restore your gut microbiome from the havoc that those antibiotics wreak. So, wreak. <laughs> Um, but, you know, we have to take antibiotics at times. There's emergent situations where you can't avoid it, so what do you do? Well, hopefully you find a naturopathic doctor. <laughs> um, but you take a probiotic, but that's not enough. Um, the studies have shown that the benefits of taking a probiotic stop as soon as you stop taking the probiotic. So what do we do to change that? We actually have to cultivate and garden the intestinal microbiome. And you guys could check out, like, check out my website or my YouTube because I talk a lot about this on there. Um, the diff, the, for my patients, when I give them a probiotic, I actually give them a comprehensive food plan alongside of it. So that's the difference maker. It's not just taking a pill, throwing it in there, because you won't grow those colonies of bacteria without feeding them. Um, there is some sort of headway into that area with the addition of prebiotics or the recognition that fiber is really necessary to grow bacterial colonies, but I get a little bit more specific with that. Um, I actually will target which bacterial strain has any type of significance for what you're going through. Um, it might be hormonal issues, it might be immunity issues. And we can actually find if there's any research that has shown that certain foods feed that bacteria. So for just like a, an example, I might prescribe a probiotic and say, but I want you to eat walnuts three times a week, kidney beans four times a week, and I want you to make sure you're getting resistant starch. So resistant starch is huge in the realm of probiotics. Um, resistant starch cannot be broken down by the human digestion. It's broken down by bacteria. And what it produces when the bacteria break it down is something called butyric acid. Butyric acid is what makes Parmesan cheese smell really stinky. And it's also literally food for the gut. It nourishes your entire digestive tract. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of leaky gut, but this is when you have a degradation of your intestinal lining, which down the line leads to allergies. It can even go as far as um, autoimmune issues. And so um, eating resistant starch not only feeds the beneficial bacteria, but it also helps to feed the intestinal lining and really heal it up. So if I could give, you know, as I'm trying to kind of convey here in my practice, I'm really all about precision therapeutics. So I'm looking to give you the best probiotics specifically with the best strain for you. But if I were to give everybody just a blanket statement that would work for everyone is that you want to be getting soil-based probiotics, not dairy-based. You And there are companies that label their probiotic as soil-based, but most of the products, if you find a medicinal grade probiotic, most of them actually have strains that are soil-based. Um, in the realm of probiotics, the thing that's interesting is we can only give a bacteria that we can actually grow in a laboratory and then put into a capsule and then into a bottle and into your hands. There are a whole host of other bacteria that do not grow in oxygen, but they can exist in your gut. So that's why it's important to have really like a repopulation diet that encourages the growth of these bacteria that are already present, but they might not be present in the right ratios. Um, so the other sort of blanket statement that would be great for everybody is to eat a resistant starch. What are resistant starches? Um, this is when a, typically a starchy vegetable, like a potato um, or a bean, when they're cooked and then cooled, and then they can be reheated again. The actual chemical structure is changed, 
and it becomes undigestible to us, but it becomes beneficial to the bacteria in our gut, and that's like golden. So everyone should be eating resistant starch. And the last thing I'll mention before I open up for any questions is that, um, of course, we want to avoid antibiotics. We've kind of everybody has gotten to that point in medicine. Even the mainstream medicine model um, has recognized that we're over medicating. We're giving too many antibiotics. It's affecting the microbiome. It's also affecting the bacteria in our environment. It's creating these resistant bugs that are harder to kill. But there are other ways to avoid antibiotics. You're not just getting antibiotics when you take a pill when you're sick. You're getting antibiotics anytime that you eat conventional meat. So non-organic meat is treated preventively with antibiotics. It's just our farming practices today, the way that we raise animals, we, we inject them with antibiotics to prevent the, the livestock from being infected. So if you're eating conventional meat, you're getting antibiotics into your system. If you're drinking tap water, unfiltered water, you're also getting antibiotics into your system because antibiotics are in the, the runoff, they're in our water sources. So another blanket statement, if I'm gonna give one, um, I usually recommend everyone to get, I, I use a Berkey water filter, um, which is a stainless steel filter. Um, I don't make any money from Berkey, but um, I definitely promote them hard because they have the best research behind really eliminating all of those antibiotics and some of the other um, some of the other medications that are in our water. I mean, they've even found in Alaskan salmon, wild salmon, they still find antibiotic traces of antibiotics. Yeah, so don't get scared. You know, we can't be perfect. We're never going to eliminate it all. But so that the answer is to really be eating a healthy, unprocessed whole food diet that's supporting the, the microbiome and avoiding antibiotics where you can. Also, the hand sanitizer thing. If you use hand sanitizer, stop now. It's terrible for you. It's terrible for the environment, it's terrible for your microbiome, and it's terrible for bacteria in the environment at large. Um, so, you know, I wanted to give you guys some takeaways so that you can start knowing how to start rebuilding your gut. But I really suggest getting with somebody who's going to test your microbiome and target specifically how you can sort of guard in your microbiome to improve your personal health. So I'll take any questions if anybody has any.